Here are seven simple steps to improve the accessibility of your Elementor websites. So let's jump right in. The first step is to include the proper landmark regions to create a proper document structure. Let's see how we can do that using the Elementor theme builder. The landmark regions include things like your header, your navigation, your main body area, and your footer. So now let's go ahead and see how we can properly mark them as landmark regions. So we'll go over to your Elementor theme builder. I'll go to my site header first. This was created using the Elementor theme builder. Then in your site header, there are two ways you can do it. The main way to do it is to go to your header settings. So your settings, you see the pop-up saying header settings. When you click on it, you can now go ahead to the sidebar settings and you see the HTML tag. Simply change it from div to header. And you've properly marked your header as a header. Then we can publish it. The other way you can do it is by setting this to a div, but then setting your main container to become the header. So you go under additional options, HTML tag, and then you can set it to header. But I'll prefer that you use the header settings. Either one will work, but you have to make sure that the header doesn't have another semantic HTML element above it. So you cannot put the header into an article tag or any other kind of tag because it will no longer become a landmark region. It will be named as something else. So that's it. Let me go to the header settings and I'll set it up to become the header. And I'll publish that. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and do the same thing for our footer setting. So I'll go to my theme builder. And I'll go under my footer. I like to name them so that it's easy for me to know. See, I've named them site header, site footer. So I can easily go to the templates that I want. So under site footer, I'll go ahead and edit it. And then you simply do the same thing. You go to the footer settings. When you click on it, change the HTML tag from a div, which is there by default, to the footer. Then you can go ahead and publish it. Similar to the header, you can, rather than doing it on the HTML tag here, you can go into your first container that wraps every item within the footer and set that to be a footer. As long as it doesn't have a parent element which has any semantic meaning like section or header or main or any other kind of tag, it must be either a div or nothing so it should be a direct child of the body that's what it all means and like i said about the header i prefer you use the footer settings and change it over there so that's it for the header and the footer you do the same thing for your single post template or your single page template so i'll go back to the theme builder and this time i'll go to my single post template edit it and over here you go do the same thing but this one there will be a twist later but ideally you come over to the single post settings and you do exactly the same thing so you go to the html tag and then you set it to main go ahead and publish it and you've sorted out for your header your main and your footer the next thing you need to check out for is that you have working skip links. The skip links are used by keyboard users to quickly navigate from the top of the page to your main content area. So now let's see how we can make sure the skip links are working. So I'll jump back into the page. To test if the skip links are working, using only your keyboard, simply press the Ctrl or Command L to get to the search bar, then press the Tab key multiple times until you get to Skip to Content. Then Press the enter key and ideally it should skip your entire header section and move you directly into the main content area. So when I press the enter key, you see it skips the header section. And now when I press the tab key, 
it goes directly to the first link or the first focusable element in my page. So that means it's working for my pages. Now we we'll go ahead and test if it's working for my single post template. So I'll come down to the bottom to one of my blog posts and let me open it up. Then I'll do the same thing. So I'll press Ctrl L, then the tab key multiple times till I get to the skip to content. Now when I press the enter key, you see that nothing happened. When I press the tab key, it is still going through my header section. So that means the skip to content is not working. So now how can we fix this? We do it in about four simple steps. So let's jump back into the single post template. So here we are back on our single post template. The first thing we need to do is go back to our single post settings and then change the HTML tag back to a div. I know that might sound weird, but don't worry. Then the next thing we need to do is come down to the bottom, create a new container. I'll set it to be a Flexbox container, then anyone. And what you have to do is remove all of the settings to zero out every setting. So basically you set it to full width, set the gap to zero, come under advanced tab, set the padding to zero as well. Then what we're going to do now is make this our main tag. So I'll say main so that we can easily identify it. Then I'll come under the layout tab and under additional settings and change the HTML tag to a main. Next, we'll come under our containers of everything we've created before, right click, do a copy and then paste it inside the main. Then I'll go ahead and delete the previous copy. So now we have everything that we've created inside of the main content area. And that's it. The next step we need to do now is that although this is all set up, we need to add the ID equal to content. So come under the advanced tab, then to the CSS ID and simply add content. So now we've made the main with an ID equal to content. Then the final step, I'll leave a link to the code in the description and to the video where I explain why we need this code is to use this code. You can use it in your code snippets plugin or create a HTML widget at the bottom of the single post template and activate it there. Or you can use the Elementor code in the Elementor Pro, but I'm just going to be using this, so I'll just activate it, save, come on my page, publish it. Then now I'll go ahead and test it out. So here we have on the front end, let me go ahead and refresh. And now I'll press Ctrl L again, then press the tab key, tab, tab, skip to content, press the enter key. And now let me press the tab key now. You see, I skip through the entire header section and I just went straight into the main content area. So that's how we can fix the skip to content links. The next tip is to ensure proper heading level. Ensure that you are choosing the heading structure in a logical order based on the structure of the document rather than how big or how small they are. To increase the size of the font, use CSS and not by heading levels. So now let's go ahead and see how we can test it out and how we can easily fix it. So here we are back on the home page. The tool I would recommend that you install is called Headings Map. It's a free Chrome extension. I'll leave a link to it in the description. That will help you to visualize how your heading structures are on your page. So let me come back to the page. I'll go into my extensions and I'll choose Headings Map. And immediately you can see it gives you some red signs to tell you that your heading levels are not in order. So now let's see how we can go ahead and fix it. So I'll come back to my page, edit it with Elementor. And we'll just go through the document itself and see how the headings should maybe be structured. So as you can see, we have conscious business coaching and that seems to be the main focus of the page. So we give that as the H1. Then as we go underneath, we see another heading here and it has some 
content underneath it. So that is something you have to remember. If there is content underneath it, then it could probably be a heading. And does it sound like a heading? I believe so. So we now make that our H2. So we keep going down. We see another set of headings. And these seem to be headings under this subheading. So we make those ones to be subheadings under the heading called you are in the right place. So those will now be given H3s. And we'll keep going. We can see this document. The one that is, let me go ahead and close this. The one that seems to be the main heading here is the about my story. That is what is encapsulating all of this talk that is beneath it. So that should be probably be the heading. But this heading is not directly a child of the first heading. So we'll now take it back up one level and say maybe that's going back to being a H2 because it is having the same level of importance as this you are in the right place because it's not a child of that section. So you now make this the H2. This doesn't really feel like a heading. So I'll make that a paragraph text. Then these could be headings because they are headings with some bit of text underneath them. So this will now be the about my story. We are talking about my life history, my hobbies. So these are all topics under about my story. So those will now be H3s under this H2 heading. And that's how we keep going down the page. So now let's go ahead and start fixing some of them. So I'll come to the first heading. Then I'll set the heading level to H1. So that starts the document structure. Come down to this one. Then I'll set the heading to be H2. As you can see, nothing actually changed because I use CSS for styling all of these. It is having a style tag on it that styles it. It's not using the actual heading levels to make the styles. Let me show you what I mean. So if you come back to this heading, go to the style tab, content, you can see I've created some global classes and I've given them different names. So you see heading XL, if I do two XL, it gets bigger. If I say L, it gets smaller. So I'm using global typography to style the headings. So I think those ones are already H3s. We'll check it later. Uh, then I'll come to this. I'll set the heading level back to a H2 because it's starting a new subtopic. The other one, I believe it was already a paragraph tag. So yeah, that's okay. Let's see. These, they are H3s. So I think they are fine. Then we'll come to this one. H2, okay. Because it's starting a new section this is now showing us where we were featured in it is different from my life's history so that's why it is a new heading we come to the next one the workshops and we check the heading level again so don't just jump because you're trying to make something smaller or bigger then you go to h6 no you choose the heading level based on where it is logically in the document so this should be the h2 again Notice nothing changed because, like I said, in the style tab, I've already set up on that content. I've used global typography to set up everything. Then this doesn't feel like a heading because it's the live workshop that is the main topic that has been explained in this whole section. So we keep going. Then I'll set this to a H2 as well. The other one will just be like a paragraph tag because it's just a description under that heading. And I believe that should be all. Let's see. H2 as well. Because it's a new section. The tip you can just use to try to remember this is uh, that the section headings are usually H2s. Then any subheading within that same section, you now make them H3s and then you keep going down like that. Then when you go to a new section again, you start that section with another H2 and you start going down the ladder. So yeah, that's it. So then let's go ahead and see if everything is okay now. So I'll publish this and then I'll come back to my page. So let's go to the front end and we'll try again. So extensions, headings map, and you can see now when someone is using a screen reader to just look at your document outline, they can already understand where they exactly are on the page. 
They don't need anybody telling them where they are. So that's how you have to think about your heading levels. It has to be done in a logical manner. So that's it for heading levels. We'll go on to the next tip. The next tip is to ensure that your links, buttons, and images all have descriptive accessible names. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So here we are back on our home page. We can now go through the entire page and check out all our links, our buttons, and our images to ensure that they have names that adequately describes their purpose or what they are. So as you can see, we have this link says home. You know, it goes to the home page. So that is descriptive enough. We have services, portfolio, and all of these. These links already describe where they are going to. So that's fine. And then we have the book a call. It means we are going to a page where we'll be able to book a call. So that's also fine. We can see some of the other links. Like here, we see continue reading. But rather than just saying continue reading, you can either make the entire text to be more descriptive. So it says continue reading about life coach. So that means when somebody using the screen reader or like a keyboard focuses on that link. Let me show you an example. I focus on this link. That is the only thing that will be read to the screen reader user. The things before that will not be read to the screen reader user. So he may not know what that link is doing. Well, when you have something fully descriptive like this, like continue reading about life coach, then it is descriptive enough for the user to know where the link is going to. Rather than just saying, start here, click here, continue reading, or read more, those are not descriptive enough. If you have to use those kind of text, then you can use an area label to label the link to tell us where we are going to. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So the other things you need to do also is for your images, make sure that all your images have all text. So here is a good article that explains it. Say, imagine you close your eyes and you tell somebody to explain the image to you. Which one will you prefer? So this one says, selfie of Aliche, a woman with bob brown hair and a pair of large rimmed tinted glasses. She wears a floral shirt, the rosy light of a sunset among the parts of Retiro Park in Madrid illuminates her smiling face. If somebody reads that to you without you actually seeing the image, wouldn't you appreciate that amount of detail that is given to the image? Compare that with the next one, which says, maybe a selfie of one person, military uniform and park. This is not descriptive enough and the person will just be lost more than he even started with. But when you now make it descriptive, it knows that you put so much effort into it and you describe the image in a way that conveys what is there as well as the emotion behind that image. So think about that when you're creating your alt text for your images. Don't just leave your images with blank alt text unless they are completely decorative. So things like maybe a wavy line or all of those, your SVGs that are just for decorations, those can be left blank. But when the image is describing a purpose, then give it a descriptive alt text. Unless the second condition is, if the image has a text that is directly underneath it that explains the same thing as the image, then you can give the image a blank alt text. Think of that when you are building cards. Most of the time, when you build all of your loop cards, the image in the loop card tends to have the same information as the post title. So in some of those cases, you can leave a blank alt text to the image. Now let's go ahead and see how we can start adding some accessible names to some of the things here. So I'll go back and edit the page. Then I'll go to my header section first because we have an image in the header section. So I'll click on that. This image, you now think about it. There are a few types of images. Images that just link to a certain page, you try to give them the name of where the image is going to. Rather than describing the image itself, you can focus more on the function of the image. So in this case, I'll come to the image and then I would say logo Ipsum home. 
because that's where it's going to. It's going to the homepage of Logo Ipsum Company. So that's what you do as the alt text of the image. Don't just leave it blank, especially if it's a link. Don't just leave the image blank. The only time you leave the image blank is when the text that just follows after the image describes the thing that you want the image to describe. Then you can leave the alt text of the image to be blank. Then let's say, for example, this button was just something like, let's give it maybe rather than book a call, Maybe it was just called click here. Because click here is not descriptive enough, you can now come under the link settings. So see these link options here. You click on it. It gives you a drop down icon. Then you say custom attribute. So in there, you can now write aria dash label, then put the pipe symbol and say where it's going to. So I'll say click here to book a call. One thing to note here is that make sure the area label still has the text that is visible as the starting point before you add extra text. So that's why I say click here to book a call. So that will now become the accessible name of the link. Don't be tempted to go under the advanced tab to custom attributes and try to put it there because unfortunately it will be added to the wrapper div rather than the link itself. So when you want to add area labels to links, you have to go into the link, go to the options and then put the area label there. So that's it. Let me publish it. We will do the same thing for our images as well. So you go to each of the images, then try to describe it the way you understand the image in the alt text. So. That's all about it. Let's go ahead to the next tip. The next tip is about your content. Make your content easy to read. Don't use over exaggerated jargons that nobody understands. Try to make your content as simple as possible so that even an eighth grader will be able to read your content and understand exactly what you're talking about. You don't have to use professor level English or whatever language you're working with to explain what you're doing because that will make it harder for people to understand, especially when they have some kind of cognitive disabilities. So one tool I would recommend you use is called the Hemingway app. With this tool, all you have to do is drop in your content. Then it will highlight all the portions that are hard to read. And you can see all of the tips to give you different tips for things you can do to improve. Then you can also go ahead and if you're on the paid version, you can fix your grammar, tell it to help you rewrite and all other things to help you get a simpler kind of text for everybody to be able to read your content. In addition to that, also make sure that the length of your text is short enough for people to read and don't be doing center justified. Try to make it left justified, especially for long body text. So let's go ahead and see what I mean. So here we are back on my single post template. As you can see, we have this text that goes from edge to edge. It is way difficult to read. Try to make sure that your text content is kind of in a box content area and it only goes up to about 60 characters per line. Just try to make sure that it is within that range. So one way we can fix this is I'll go to Elementor, my single post template. Then I'll come under my content area. This is the post content widget. Then I'll go to the advanced settings, then the width, put custom. Then I'll try to constrain it. So rather than using percentage, I'll actually constrain it to some actual values. So one value I like to use, I'll say mean 100%, comma. Then I'll say something about maybe 60 CH, that is 60 characters. Sometimes it's not very accurate, so you have to be sure that it is working. So you try to manually check if it is actually only taking a maximum of 60 characters per line, because this is a relative unit based on some other things. So sometimes it may not be as accurate as possible, but usually it is pretty accurate. So when you say 60 characters, it will now limit the text to that 60 characters. Then 
The other thing you need to do it now, adjust it to be centered. There are two ways you can do this. You can either set a left and right margin of auto or you set on the parent container for everything to be center aligned. So let me go and press Ctrl I to open the panel. Then I can come to this container, come down to the bottom and then just set it to be centered. I need to center everything, but sometimes it might affect some other things. The other thing you can do is rather than doing this, you come to your content itself. Then I'll simply go down to the bottom, custom CSS, say selector, open and close the curly brace and say margin dash in line. And then just say auto. That will also center it, but it will not affect any other thing on the page. So let's publish this. Now let's go ahead and preview it on the front end. And as you can see now, this is a lot easier to read than when it is going from edge to edge. So that is one tip you need to do. First, make sure it is left aligned. As you can see here, it's all left aligned. And make sure you constrain the width to be a max width of about 60 characters. As a bonus tip, we can go ahead and also install some automated tools which will help us to check for the accessibility of our website as we are building it. One of those tools is called the Accessibility Checker by Equalize Digital. Let's go ahead and look at it. Two of the tools I would recommend that you check out are Equalize Digital Accessibility Checker and WP Accessibility by Joe Dolson. Those two are created by some top professionals in the accessibility space, which are tailored towards WordPress. The other tool that I've been testing out recently is called the Core Ally Accessibility for Elementor. It is by BMP Engage. So those three tools will help you out in your accessibility specifically for Elementor. So the one I will check out now is the Equalize Digital Accessibility Checker. So let's go under Plugins. And I already have it here, so let me activate it. So now that it's activated, the free version allows you to check your pages and your posts. But if you want to check your other custom post types, then you would need to use the pro version. So that's just letting you know. So now let's go over to our post. Then I'll come to my post. And now what you notice is that when you get down to the bottom of the page, you get these three tabs. And once you save your post, to go ahead and check your post on the front end for any errors. So let's see. Okay, it only has one warning. And it tells me that my reading level is a 12th grader. That means it's still too high. So ideally, I'll now take this entire post. I'll take it to Hemingway and check to improve the post before I put it back into my page to be published. Then it also allows you to test all of these things on the front end. So I'll go to the front end. You see this icon at the bottom right of your page. When you click on it, it will go ahead and show you all of the problems. So let me see what the problem is. See, empty alt text. That means for my blog post, I forgot to add an alt text for the featured image. So ideally, what I will now do is go back into my editor and then add an alt text for the image. But as you can see, that's a good way to do all of these things. It tells you so many errors that are specific to WordPress. So this is a more tailored approach. There are other tools like Wave. There is the Axe Dev tools and other ones. Those are more generalistic. This one was built specifically for WordPress. So it will help you out when you are doing your WordPress websites and fixing out simple issues like underlying links and then other things like that. So you can check them out in your own time and you see all of those things. The other one, which was Core Ally Accessibility for Elementor, I believe for now it allows you to add your focus outline because Elementor has no option for changing your focus outline. So it allows you to add focus outline on a general site level and for individual widgets like your buttons and your links and other things like that, you can add focus outlines. And I think it will also allow you to do some other accessibility improvements for your Elementor website. So I'll leave a link to all of them in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.